All right, Chris, what do you say we do a little show where we check in with our good friends? I say we do it. Let's go. I say we do it. And I think our first one that we should check in with that's on the top of our list is our friend, our... Our friend Arlando Teller, State of Arizona representative, and Chris and Vinny's friend. Hey, Arlando, how's it going? Yeah, welcome to our Zoom cast. Thank you. Uh, it's going fantastic. Thank you for this invite. I, um, I, yeah, I'm excited for this conversation. Uh, as uh, as we go through these uh, uncertain times of uh, the pandemic, I'm excited. We need a little humor. We need a little fun, little real talk. So yeah, yeah. Excited. We need some inspiration. We need hope. What does hope mean? Hope means we're going to have some friends talking to each other today and just checking in with each other. Cool. So, so I do know for a fact, Vinny has not had a haircut. Your hair looks fabulous. It's called a uh, hairspray and desperation. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I just did my own. I don't have any. So I just <laughs> busted out the clippers, but that seems to be the big topic is like, how the heck are you, are you cutting your own hair or, or, or do you have somebody cutting it for you? Um, do you know a hairstylist? Like then he's got a hairstylist in his family. I do, but I haven't seen him for nine weeks now and I'm dying over here. <laughs> So um, the day of the um, executive order uh, that Governor Ducey said, you know, the list of services that will be cut off by five o'clock, myself and a couple of friends, we ran to the nearest barber, not knowing the services that would be provided. We've never been to this place. And so I asked for my regular haircut, which is a uh, low fade with the two, then a one, and da 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 da. So I gave her really simple instructions, but um, she had did, she had did a, a, a shaved me to a one all the way to the top. Oh, <laughs> and then she left. She left the top long, and so there was a lot of people in the barber after that announcement was made. So I'm like, all right, it's fine. And so I go home to back up north to northern Arizona. And my uncle, who is a rancher, just kept walking around me as we were in the family meeting. And he's like, you look like you got in a fight with the clippers and you just (laughs) left a bush of bale of hay on your head. It's horrible. But thank God it's growing out. So... (laughs) <laughs> so can I tell you both how I relate to this story that I have only been to someone other than my uncle to cut my hair twice in my entire lifetime and it was the most terrifying experience of my life because I went about a year ago because I was in Havasu and I needed a haircut but I sat there and like Orlando just explained in, in some detail as to what he wanted I have no clue what to ask for so they said how would you like your haircut? And I'm like, I have never been asked that in all of my entire life. I've gone to my uncle and I sit there and he cuts my hair beautifully and I've never given him any guidance. So when they asked me this question, it was just utter terror and horror that came over me. And I'm like, can you just take what you see here and make it shorter? Long story short, it didn't work out very well, and I was very sad, but yes, so that's my haircut story of the day with you. And so um, when I'm at home and I'm watching the news or television with my folks in the evening, um, my mom makes comments about the newscasters' hairs as they're getting bigger because they, they don't have the you know <laughs> you can see you can see now what you know it's so funny so she's like oh look at his hair it looks like he needs to see he needs to see his haircut i'm like yes mother we all in the same boat so well my dog needs his haircut too and i can't do that he doesn't trust me <laughs> you have a dog that doesn't <laughs> trust you what did you do yeah well, well, with, well with clippers with clippers uh, <laughs> he's looking at you like really you're coming at me with those things i don't think so <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Here's my uh, quarantine self-isolation question for you. What are you binge watching Um, when you are able to watch TV? But no, I've been um, 
I've been avoiding the TV, but then I in- inch back in front of the TV and I started um, ordering it. And when I went home um, two weekends ago, my folks bought a new smart television and it was still sitting in the box. So I'm like, what are you guys doing with this? So we set it up and I put them on Netflix and Google+. Plus. Um, so the parental units have been watching all sorts of movies. And uh, it's really interesting when I come there and I visit them for the evening, they're, they're glued watching something. And uh, they watch this show called Ip Man. It's a Chinese, you know, it's a Wang Chung uh, movie. It is Ip Man 1, 2, 3, and 4. They watched it all day Saturday, the following Sunday, and I came in and they're watching for I'm like, are you guys still watching this movie about this man? <laughs> and it was done. I'm like, well, congratulations. You guys had your first marathon. They're like, what does that mean? I'm like, that means you watch from beginning <laughs> to the end. Now you're going to be looking for the same type of genre movies of, you know, Kung Fu fighting and action movies. So, yeah. So I love that you brought up your family and your parents, you know, and I, we want our show to be inspirational, hopeful, lighthearted. But at the same time, I know all of our hearts are heavy with what's happening in our world around us. And I wanted to check in with you and your family. And I mean, your greater family, it seems, you know, you read the headlines every day. And I mean, this pandemic's hitting everywhere, but it just seems as though the, the Navajo Nation and surrounding tribal areas are, are really showing some some, some very sad, sad numbers. Uh, what's happening? What's going on? Well, this pandemic has hit um, not just Navajo, but a, uh, a lot of uh, rural Arizona and rural America in a multitude of ways, um, compounding. Uh, let's go look at it in a long equation, an L- algebraic equation. So with this equation, you have components um, to it, variables like uh, multi-generational um, families living under one roof. You have 20% of the Navajo Nation doesn't have running water. You have 30% of the Navajo Nation that doesn't have electricity. You have ruralness. You have a grocery store desert. You have minimal drinking water. You have uh, just a minimal amount of medical centers throughout the Navajo Nation. What does that mean? You have then lesser amount of certified medical staff that can handle the the load. Uh, not to mention the ruralness, you know, and um, it, it becomes a compounding situation that we're all learning from. Um, when we say when I say we, not only is the community leadership um, under stress, but it goes all the way to the Navajo Nation capital, Windrock, and all the the command centers that are um, trying to distribute the services and the supplies, then it becomes a state issue. Now it's a national issue. We have the congressional delegations involved. This morning, I was on a call with Navajo Nation Washington office and at least 20 congressional delegates, congressmen, congresswomen that were on the call trying to address the issue that Navajo is uh, is under, you know, current situation. Uh, what does that mean when I go home? Um, uh, my family, uh, we live in a cluster of homesteads, um, and and my mom is the, I guess, the matriarch of the family in that homestead. Um, it's approximately, you know, 1,000 acres, and we have my uncle um, about 400 feet away, I have two aunts living also on there, and we live, you know, quietly, but also knowing that we're, we're a family unit. And all of us have been quarantined. Um, We have been separated from each other and also from the community. When we do go out, you know, we all encourage each other to wear the mask and gloves and disinfect before you go back into your home. Um, So that really does, um, um, that that message is really strong with my family. Um, As they are older, they have medical, you know, health issues. So they understand the, um, the importance of, you know, keeping your distance and not really being uh, in a situation where that would, you know, the probability would increase when uh, for infection. So, um, but we also, um, you know, continue like my, my, my dad is a great barbecuer. So he barbecued on Sunday and um, we, d- I delivered it. My mom and I delivered to her brothers and sisters uh, to feed them. Um, and, uh, uh, we had a ceremony on Saturday morning, which was the Mother Earth offering, and we were all in a huge hogan, about 20 of us, 
Um, and we had this ceremony for the family members that are there, also the family members that are not there. Uh, and we offered um, um, precious stones and other uh, offerings to Mother Earth that um, the, this virus will, um, protect, will, not, will, will not affect the family and it will go over us like a wind. It'll blow over us. So um, that was the part of the prayer that we had done on Saturday morning. And it was an all-day prayer. Um, and uh, I do participate in uh, traditional ceremonies. Um, and that was one of them. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing that. That is beautiful. That really gives us insight to what's happening with you and your family and your tribe. And, um, gosh, you know, I just so much love and um, just an embrace really to go out to everyone right now, but, but mm -hmm. we're, we're just all in the same boat. Do you, where do you see us coming out of this? Are, are we going to be different? Do you think that there will be a change in how we as people are with each other? Do you see changes? Are you hopeful? I am very hopeful. I'm hopeful that, um, we are learning from this pandemic as a community as a family, as an individual, as a family, as a community. So um, I think the new normal will be wearing a mask, social distancing. I think the new normal also include telecommuting more. Um, and, you know, what does that mean? I am not a telecommuter. I don't know how to work from home because in my mind, it's structured that I get up, get ready, and go to work. On my way to work, I mentally prepare myself on what my task will be at work. I can't. I honestly can't do that now because I get up and I go to the computer and I'm still in my pajamas. I'm not mentally changing my clothes and putting on my, you know, my work clothes because I'm still in that mindset. Remember, I don't remember if you knew um, if you had this, um, you come back from school and your, your nanny or your mom would say, you know, take your school clothes off and put on your after school clothes on. So that's what I would do. So I still am wearing my after school clothes, if you will, while I'm working. So my mental capacity is just like not switched on to work and it doesn't really work for me. Nevertheless, I think that's going to be the new normal. Um, and uh, I have a lot of hope in humanity um, that um, we're going to learn from this um, this virus. So yeah, it's, it's going yeah, to be affecting the entire world. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's, uh, I think you you can see who the real leaders are and who are embracing what the things that we need to do. Um, you know, I know Vinny's done it with Lake Havasu MPO and I've been doing it with Simpo. You know, we were, both of us were early on, even before we got the, you know, the, the stay at home order from the governor, we were already had made transition to working from home um, and having our staff stay, stay safe. Um, Allison uh, in our office uh, just had a baby on February 28th. Mm -hmm. And I'm like the last thing we need is to have her or any of us be around her and her newborn baby. It didn't seem like a good idea. Um, but luckily we're small enough staff that we were able to do it. And we had the, the the computer facilities that we that were portable. They have mobile connections, so we were able to make that change. But you know, when I was saying earlier about uh, how all those meetings were getting canceled and nothing was happening for a couple of weeks, um, I was up and ready to roll. Like I could I could do my regular work like this through that, um, but not many people were. Uh, a lot of ADOT was not set up that way. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just been um, a slow transition um, to, to remaining connected and having that, those discussions with people. And I'm using the video part more than right. ever. Um, I used to get on these things and never have the camera on. But now it's like this is like our opportunity to see each other's faces if, if we can't be in the same spot. So, um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think the world in general is going to change um, and how we do things and how we perceive things for sure. Now, my mom made, made all, all of us a mask and we've got our, this is our travel kit. <laughs> it's got gloves and Clorox and we've got everything right. we need, but uh, yeah, I think you're right. That's just going to be the new, 
a new way of doing it. Well, I hope you're right. I hope you both are right that we have a new norm. I'm, I guess I've always, yeah, I've always wanted us to continue to to improve. And um, you know, I, I, it's such a tragic time, but I do hope there are some good things that come out of this. I hope we are reconnected with people in our lives. I hope that um, even though it's a way different way of communicating and connecting, that. Um, that we still appreciate each other, I guess, in a, in a different way, but even more so, I guess, is what I would say. Yeah, I'm still here. Sorry, I went to get my charger for my phone. So I was going to say, it's weird to look like you're walking, but your background doesn't move. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it looks like you're walking, but your background is moving at all. I'm like, that's odd. Yeah, it's like you're... <laughs> We're on a treadmill. <laughs> so here we are interviewing Arlando as he's climbing out of the canyon. <laughs> Can you tell us how your 50 mile hike went this morning? I'm actually, that's so funny you guys are saying that because I, my phone is ready to die and I had to get my, my cord out of my car. So I'm walking and I'm glad I have this background because you don't see all the mess that I'm running through. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we got to be innovative, I guess, right? So, uh, so Arlando, uh, I don't know if you've heard, um, like, what, what the situation ADOT's going through. Mm. There was a the state board meeting that was last Friday, pretty tough uh, virtual listen. Uh, it, it was their first one. There was, I don't know how many people were on that call, Vinny, like 200. Um, it was it was difficult for them to conduct business, but um, but the next meeting, Christine Ward uh, with ADOT Finance uh, is going to give an update on uh, projections from her revenue, and it doesn't look good. We've been waiting for so long. Um, obviously, not you know with people not going. Uh, very many places uh, on a daily basis, they're not buying gas. So um, I think a lot of people don't know Highway User Revenue Fund, what that even is mm -hmm. from, from your gasoline tax, right? Um, and when you use that as a state to leverage down federal money. We've been waiting for so long. We've been waiting for this time to begin. So even though we're hearing discussions about potential larger uh, service transportation bill with more federal funds um, coming from Congress um, and the president, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that we as a state would be able to, to leverage those if we don't have enough state revenue to do it. So kind of sounds like the five-year plan is going to take quite a hit. Uh, and we're probably going to have a lot of projects deferred. Um, and we're already in the situation where we're not really doing expansion, but, um, I, I guess to kind of from your experience when you were on the state transportation board, um, I know you were on there for about a year. Um, you know, I know you're going to be feeling for, for the board members that are on there now, but I get, how do you, how do you see our transportation system and our funding mechanisms changing or being impacted through the time we're going through now? I, I just got off the phone before this call with um, Arizona Airport Association. They're also um, concerned with um, the uh, potential um, uh, revenue projections um, that they are assuming um, because we haven't we haven't heard from Christine um, and. Their, the airport's revenues are um, really um, are ninety five percent from last year. Mm -hmm. The five percent of ninety. You know, so, example, uh, Sky Harbor uh, on Monday, not this past Monday, Monday before, was the busiest airport in the United States with fifty five hundred employments uh, or uh, passengers going through the terminals, mm -hmm. 5,500 passengers in the terminal. Last year, this time, they were at 95,000, almost 100,000 in one day. So they're seeing a tremendous amount of drastic uh, numbers. And so uh, the phone call with Arizona Airport Association uh, was 
what do what is going to happen on May on May first? Uh, is the uh, is the chamber are the chambers going to open and just signy die? Um, and if that's the case, are we going to address um, any more funding allocations uh, in a special session? What I shared with them is that um, as of yesterday morning, uh, I received well yesterday I received two calls. Yesterday morning was a was a caucus call. And it was to prepare us for uh, a sunny die only item um, agenda on May 1st. We've been waiting for so long. We've been waiting for this time to begin. So um, that being said, um, we were asked if we we're going to be in our office like I am today or on the floor or or calling in remotely from home. Uh, and the reason for that is you know, the staff here will be placing the desk in a, you know, random, not random, but um, uh, you know, this space away from each other. And so that was the conversation, you know, uh, we, we knew then uh, before 10 o'clock that we would be only addressing one item and that was a signy die and it needed uh, 31 people on the floor to make that motion. So the secondary call was um, an emergency um, caucus call, whereas the conversation was, well, we don't know if the signy die item will be the only item on the agenda, meaning that the Republicans um, were very displeased and um, the speaker not consulting with them on a singular item on the agenda. They have, well, we all have uh, unfinished business. There are 563 uh, items that require action. And um, a lot of the Republicans, I mean, we all worked really hard this session to uh, address some of the items on there. I have several items that I want to address. One is this uh, aviation fund program for $10 million, senior citizen program, tribal senior citizen program, um, and several other items, transportation items. But um, with the current situation, um, and, and then this is what I said too, uh, that um, before the COVID really hit Arizona and shut down Arizona, we were talking about a billion dollar surplus. What is going to happen with that surplus now that we are, you know, our economy is literally, um, you know, is swimming with only two fins rather than all four. So, um, yeah, that's going to be on the conversation to uh, May 1st. And I do believe we're going to go in for a special session in the end of June. Why do I say that? It's because, um, you know, the Arizona revenue forecast um, now doesn't really reflect the downturn of the economy due to this pandemic we'll see that and JLBC will, will reflect that in the report uh, at the end of June. So we may not even be passing any appropriations because we're right now, I think Arizona is going to close its, um, you know, its purse strings until we see what mm -hmm. happens. And that affects our projects. It affects her for those communities. Um, and also the MPOs um, and, um, our, you know, NPOs and uh, COGS on their projects. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm afraid. Actually, I'm not afraid, afraid. I am cautious. Um, you know, all we can do is hope for the best. Yeah, I'm definitely concerned, but um, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your energy. Wherever you get that energy from, I'm amazed. I'm following you on social media, and oh my gosh, you're you're moving bales of hay, and there's all these different family projects happening. You're passing, you're trying to pass legislation when when the when you're in session. There's just so much going on. But my gosh, I just really appreciate you being our friend, but appreciate your oh, leadership. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And just continue to have that for really the state of Arizona, really. 
Um, I guess one thing Chris and I had talked about the other day on his t-shirt, he had this phrase, do better. And I think that's a great question for our new little show. So where can we do better? Where do you see us as people? Um, Where can we do better? Where do you want us to do better? I believe uh, what you can do, uh, definitely promote your family and your community to be careful and exercise social distancing and wearing a mask and being conscientious of themselves. Uh, number two, we, we still need to um, exercise our civic right of voting. So if we can register folks to vote and be part of the, you know, the effort to reelect or elect um, the state and federal level or county level, that's great. Number two, Three, um, you know, get yourselves and your community involved with Census 2020. Um, but number four, always look out for your your family and your neighbors. And um, I think uh, we also need to volunteer as much as we can um, and be active in that volunteering. But at the same time, really be conscientious of yourself. Um, as my grandmother once said to me, is if you can't take care of yourself, who's going to take care of you? Who's going to take care of you if you can't take care of yourself? And so, you know, it's that old adage of, you know, airplane ride, you put the mask on before you put it on your children. You put it on your fr- your fr- your fr- yourself first and in your children. So that's how I pretty much on top with my family is, you know, like, you need to take care of you first. Don't forget, don't, don't worry about me. You take care of you out yourself first because I'm taking care of myself as well. So... Um, I think those are things that we we can definitely promote, you know, volunteerism, donating, um, and uh, looking out for our fur babies, our dogs, cats, and birds, and what have you, our pets that are also our family members. Yes, we all want to do better. We can do better. And those words are so helpful. Um, So I think something we could do better with is smile more, laugh more, inspire each other more. So thank you for working with us on this brand new experiment, this little show where Chris and I just want to laugh a little, inspire a little, educate a little. We just want to do our part and we hope that it'll turn out to be something we know everyone's stuck at home. So representative Arlando Teller of the great state of Arizona, we thank you and we love you and we're supporting you and encouraging you so much. (laughs) Keep up up the great work i was pretending walking how's that i was walking that's awesome flashes of light (laughs) (laughs) stop and take a picture exactly (laughs) yeah uh no thank you so much i really appreciate this uh opportunity to sit with my friends and um, talk and real talk um and just you know jibber jabber just bs and you know talk about other things other than here uh, you know it, it's good it's a good distraction so well arlando thanks for joining us today we appreciate it as as always lots of fun very informative and i'm glad we got to be in the canyon with you <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> i'm glad to be here thank you very much boys thank you yeah take care take care see you guys later All right, bye, thanks arlando bye, bye deb bye bye arlando bye everyone bye bye See us next week on The Zoom Machine. The Zoom Machine. Just uh, Google it. Get on the Google and you'll find us. The Google Machine. Type in The Zoom Machine and you'll find it. Chris, this is a hit show. That's all I have to say. We're brilliant. Yeah, pretty much.